Hey guys, welcome back to the DC show. Is the God of Stories replacing Kevin Bot? God, I hope so. Stick, Stick around. around. All right, guys. So the Marvels came out almost two weeks ago, and uh, we're going to talk about how we enjoyed it. Or kind of enjoyed it i mean or it, hated it no i, I don't think you ever hated it no it was it was a good movie it it's getting a lot more hate out there than it should um for sad reasons but there is some parts of it that aren't so great as well but overall it is a fun movie it is a lot of action i yeah. enjoyed it it's, i think for what it is it's a great movie yeah so um, not to name drop too much, but when I got there, um, I, John Campia, uh, if you're familiar with the, the John Campia show, he was coming out of the theater. Um, he had just finished doing his little out of the theater review and I asked him and, and Ray, uh, I said, how was the movie as don't give anything away, but did you, did you enjoy it? And they're like, eh, well, it depends. I was like, well, I just want to have fun. I want to just enjoy going to a movie, a fun movie. They're like, yeah, you're going to probably enjoy it then. Yeah. And they're right. That was that. That's all I was looking for. There's definitely things that you can nitpick. There's things that I didn't think were perfect in the movie at all. Um, but it was fun. I, I definitely enjoyed it more than Captain Marvel. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, Iman Vellani is the star of the the show. Yeah, as far sure. as I'm concerned, that her and the Flurkins, which are all CGI, but yeah. you know, yeah. essentially that the, they're the ones that make the movie good. Yeah, I mean, Amon Vellani is kind of that emulsifier that kind of pulls the whole team together, makes everything work. Uh, just the short amount of interaction she had with Sam Jackson, uh, it was pretty fun as well. Yeah. Um, but honestly, like even kind of the opening action scene where they were inadvertently switching places, yeah. it was fun. I don't know, the pacing was good. It was it was uh, a little bit of com- comedic action, but still some and good honestly, action. I liked I liked Monica Rambeau. I, I think she's really good in that photon or spectrum, or they never officially called her anything other than the. Professor Marvel. Professor Marvel. Marvel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, I, I really her char- her powers are really strong, and obviously yeah. we'll get into some into you know spoilers with the end credit scenes in a little yeah. bit. But you know she's pretty strong, so I I think it'll be fun watching her character continue to grow and see her yeah. in future projects. Yeah, I I think one of the reasons why I enjoyed this movie a lot more than Captain Marvel is I feel like the the writing. And maybe even just straight up the acting for Brie Larson uh, was better in this movie. Um, she just felt really flat and like not charismatic at all in Captain Marvel. And I felt like she maybe it was just the fact that she was having more fun, you know, like she was having fun in this movie. She's, you know, it's the energy that everyone else is bringing to the set. And even, you know, Sam Jackson is, you know pretty uh intense at times was having fun and yeah. you know joking I, around i definitely feel like he was a lot more back to form than he was in secret invasion yeah, like that I've... that version of nick fury was not my favorite by any means yeah and then he was the the lead of that too so i mean yeah i don't know but he yeah it's fun and you know iman got to have her nick fury moment at the end as well which mm-hmm. we'll talk about a little bit yep. but um, yeah, I, I overall enjoyed it. The little Flurkin cat babies were, were pretty interesting getting to swallow people up and yeah. then the ship. And make that it was, uh, impress it. that was quite predictable. And, and I was like, oh no, they're going to do this really. Like before it started happening, I was like, dude, they're seriously going to have to capture all the people inside the, the, the kitten Flurkins. The Fleur Kittens, I think they called them. Fleur Kittens. Um, and I was like, this is going to be so cheesy. But honestly, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Like people were running away from them and they're like, no. And then the people were chasing them with the. I don't know. I thought it was actually pretty funny. Yeah. I, I thought it was well done. And some of the yeah. some of the CGI was pretty, pretty good considering past CGI oh, yeah. flops yeah. in the MCU. They're really, aside from maybe a few shots of Brie Larson herself, like not even really looking like her. Mm-hmm. Uh, where it was like clearly CGI. I think there's one where she's like hovering in onto a ship. It was in the trailer too. Yeah. And I was like, man, I really hope they fix that in, you know, before the movie releases and they didn't, it still looked the I same. I guess she's actually like allergic to cats. So anytime that goose is with her, it's all CGI. Oh wow. But I guess they had two, two different cats playing goose. In okay. This movie, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about, talk about any of the other things that maybe didn't work so well for you? Um, honestly, you know, Darben as the villain, I mean, she was fine. The acting was fine. It just, you know, there's certain things that they could, I don't know. They could have had a stronger villain in my opinion. Yeah. I, I feel like the, 
I think Ronan was much stronger as the accuser in Guardians than she yeah. was as another accuser, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Nothing against her, but... I, like, I, I didn't feel like her, her motivation didn't feel very sincere. Um, I personally didn't care for her look, like her wardrobe, um, the weird metal thing between her teeth. It just weird to me. Um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't really overly care for her as a villain. Um, you know, it's kind of sad when they have these villains that are only around for one movie and then so, they're gone. But this one, I don't feel like it was the villain was strong enough to really bring back for another movie. So her was, reasoning for wanting to go attack Captain Marvel and all of the places that she's associated with essentially is because it, you know, sometime between the end of, uh, Captain Marvel mm -hmm. and this or 30 years later, apparently it's been over 30 years that she's been like, displaced or whatever from when the supreme intelligence the ai yeah. from uh, the kree was mm -hmm. destroyed by captain marvel so that's why they call her the annihilator because essentially she annihilated their people yeah um, well she annihilated their ai that kind of led their people and kind of made decisions for them and then they kind of fell into civil war and they blame her for their civil war and depleting the resources on their planet so she goes and tries to deplete the resources from different planets she's associated yeah. with um, which uh, I forgot the first one where the scrolls were at. I forgot what it's called, but basically took all the air from like that refu planet. the refugee planet. Yeah. Yeah. So that whole mechanic was one of the big downsides for me. It really didn't make any sense. Um, Going through the little ports. I mean, the air one, points. maybe not as bad as the water one, but I mean, you're pulling air. It doesn't, doesn't really work that way. You can't just push air in and then have it stay. And like, if your air is leaving, that means your atmosphere is depleting. Whatever, it's getting too scientific, I guess. But then the water ones specifically, like they had no water and then they're like flooding their planet. There's no, they didn't ever stop it as far as I know. So it was just pulling in all the water and it would have been pulling in the air too, right? Why did it pull just the water and the other one pulled just <laughs> air? Like it didn't, the mechanics didn't make any sense. And how they opened sure. the portal up just in the right spot by their planet to make sure the water landed where it was supposed to. Um, and then like they didn't ever say what happened to the people on that planet. Um, on the, the singing done? planet. Uh, I mean, Al Aladna. Aladna. Yeah. Um, I know that was what a lot of people didn't like the was singing. the singing planet. And it was different. It was, yeah, it was odd. But overall, there was stuff that was way worse in the movie. And I didn't mind that scene so much. It didn't bother me. Um, it was I mean, kind of funny at the whole being bilingual thing. Yeah. F full disclosure, Amber and I actually really enjoy like musicals and stuff. So I didn't mind that there was some singing. I thought it was a unique uh, part of the story that I had They hadn't showed seen. that in the trailer. There's going to be some kind of dance number yeah, or something yeah. going on. Um, but yeah, that line was pretty funny. And he's like, oh, you could speak? And she's like, oh yeah, he's bilingual. I was like, that was pretty funny. Yeah. I don't know. Amber and I both laughed at that. I did too. Um, it was maybe a, a cheap joke, but it was still funny. I don't yeah. care. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was, uh, I think shortly after that, uh, when they had to kind of take off from that planet, um, because basically they were all going to get destroyed if they didn't, um, there was a moment that she was kind of expressing what had happened, the reason why they call her the Annihilator, and it just felt super flat to me. It didn't seem very sincere. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit, sure. because the the interesting, kind of interesting thing is that all their powers are kind of interlaced oh, yeah. now yeah. because the bangle that Kamala has from the Miss Marvel show, excuse me for hitting the mic. Um, and then this bangle that uh, Darben finds, mm -hmm. they're supposed to be part of the what, they're, they're set. Yeah. Qu quantum bands, the quantum bands. Yeah. yeah. They're called the quantum bands apparently, um, which is from the comics. And um, yeah, essentially like since they each had one, they weren't working properly, but whenever any of the, marvels use their powers they all kind of swap places if they weren't together yeah even if they were together they would swap where they were in the rooms or whatever it was yeah. kind of an interesting dynamic and getting to see like with the beastie boys and stuff all the different ways they made them the fight scenes were pretty fun getting to see them swap around yeah um there didn't seem to be much rhyme or reason to the swapping and i know they they had like a training montage uh, where they were learning how to control it um but it seemed like they can use their power. Sometimes they didn't switch and sometimes they would switch when they didn't want to. I don't know. I, they didn't really explain. It how, wasn't like, it, it was like just specific powers. Cause Carol has a lot of power. She was not just like one power. You sure. Know? Sure. It would only be like when she did certain attacks or whatever it would trigger. Like when she started flying, it didn't, that's one of her powers, right? She could fly. Yeah. When she flies. But when she did fly, that is one of the times that made them switch in the beginning when she flew up. And yeah, it didn't sudden, happen every time. You're right. It didn't happen. Yeah. Every so time. I'm, that's what, that's my point. That was inconsistent and they didn't really explain if it was a certain power that triggered that they could have said that it would have made things a little more, you know, clear, you know, or concise, but whatever, again, getting a little bit nitpicky, I guess, you know, um, 
that was pretty minor. Like, ultimately, like I said, though, I had fun in the movie. Yeah. I know the movie like flopped for for a Marvel movie. It flopped. I mean, for it, sure. it, it, it was did. the lowest <laughs> grossing one. It was a forty seven million domestic it, yeah, opening weekend. Yeah. They said the second the second lowest was Incredible Hulk at fifty five. And that's what two thousand and I don't know, early 2000s. Yeah. 2000s. And, and actually what's even more crazy than that is it had one of the absolute worst second week drops. It was a 78% drop in the box office uh, for the second week, which is not good at yeah. all. And it sucks because, you know, people are, if people are saying it's bad, a lot of people aren't going to go watch it, you know, but, yeah. you know, and some people are out there are giving it positive, you know, positive criticisms and some praise, yeah. but overall it's, you know, not doing too well, but on the flip side of that, Nia DaCosta is now the highest grossing uh, black female director yeah. with her movie at when it's at 110 million last I, I saw um, total or, or domestic, 110 million domestic total, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I mean, for whatever reason, there's a lot of negative, uh, I don't want to say press, a lot of negative opinions about this movie. And I feel like a lot of the people who have those opinions haven't seen the movie. Um, I mean, a lot of people are just, they didn't like Brie Larson from the beginning, you know, and they're going to boycott the movie essentially and not watch it because they don't, not, a fan I think of that's her. part of it. But I think the other part is like, and it's sad that this is the case, but they're like, oh, it's, it's three female, you know, leads. So it's not going to be a good movie. And, you know, I feel like there's a right and wrong way to do diversity in these movies. Mm -hmm. And, and I didn't feel at any point during this movie that they were shoving that down my throat. Like it felt really natural. Uh, it was very cohesive. I felt like the, the dynamic between the characters was really good. In fact, that was probably the strongest point of the movie. Yeah. Um, and so I just think it was really well done in that regard. And that's usually what people seem to be critiquing it for. So yeah. and the sad thing though, is a, a casual fan probably is not going to like it because they're not likely have gone back and watched the Miss Marvel series and WandaVision. That to is learn true. More about these other characters. That is very that's true. That's what does make it more fun for us because we've seen those and we yeah. know these characters a little bit more. Yeah. Like you said, if you haven't watched uh, WandaVision or Miss Marvel, which I feel like even though Miss Marvel was one of the better um, Disney plus shows, um, I don't think it was very highly viewed. So, you know, it literally picks up right where that ends. So if you don't see that and understand that, Oh, they switched. Like, you're just like, who is this person? Why is she being entangled? Who are these other and two the people Kong family, there. like they're pretty awesome. If yeah. you get to watch them in that show, they're yeah. one of the better parts of the movie. I, as well. I agree. They're one of the better parts of the movie and one of the best parts of the show. I mean, Amon Vellani as Kamala Khan is like probably one of the, the most refreshing things to come to the MCU in this latest two phases. Yeah. Um, just her, her excitement to be there is like just completely genuine. And she just brings a certain amount of, I don't know, just fun to the screen, you know, for sure. So, yeah. And so, I mean, that can kind of lead into the, the end credit scene in our next little topic. Yeah, which was Amon Vellani, you know. Uh, getting her Nick Fury moment. Kamala Khan getting her Nick Fury moment. So there's a moment in earlier in the movie where this, uh, you know, uh, sword tablet gets left behind in her home and she finds it. I think it. she hides it, doesn't she? She, I, she, probably the kicked, she probably kicked her into the couch. Yeah, when they were doing the cleanup and everything, she probably, because she was sweeping up stuff. Mm -hmm. She probably. The clear tablet. Yeah, the clear Is tablet. Is that an iPad? I yeah. Wish. Yeah. Um, so she has all the files for all the different super powered people and stuff. And, uh, she starts to decide she wants to build her own team. Yeah. Because she realizes that, you know, she works well in a team and she enjoyed that whole thing with the Marvels, but they're kind of, uh, another thing that happened is when, uh, Photon, uh, Maria Rambeau, when she gets the powers at the end, she basically goes into another universe. Yeah. So she's gone. So now Amon Vellani is like, you know, my team's gone, uh, I'm going to make a new team. Yeah. And she is. So she goes out and she casts Kate Bishop first. Mm -hmm. Yep. And she name drop. Well, it doesn't name drop. She talks about uh, Cass, Cassie Lang, but she's just says, you know, Ant-Man has a daughter. So, you know, clearly, um, you know, she wants to start building the team. And, yeah. and uh, I mean, it, they only talked about those two, right? Sure. But there was kind of a, an earlier version of the script, apparently that had her meeting a Bunch couple of, of, well, I think it was a couple. She said at least, at least in the new rock stars video, yeah. I think she said it was a couple or two or three. Um, but she said there, there are ones that, um, you know, if they did that, they would kind of already have basically established the team there and she yeah. didn't want that. And they know. said it wouldn't really make sense to have the team already together. And so they're yeah. like, it was kind of like a placeholder. Yeah. 
So uh, some of the other members we may see, sure. um, you know, uh, we might see, uh, um, is it Patriot, I believe? Patriot, who was in the Falcon Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. the, the grandson of Isaiah Bradley. Yep. And then um, we'll probably see Riri Williams at some point. Ironheart. Yep. Um, Miles Morales, if he ever comes to the MCU, I, I hope. That would be awesome. In the live action, at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, technically, he hasn't been in the MCU sure, sure. at all. Sure, We did get... Um, uh, his uncle technically in the MCU. And he mentions he's got a nephew. He does mention his nephew, yeah. So he's he's canon in the MCU. He just hasn't been on screen. Actually yet. that was a that was a deleted scene, wasn't it? Mm, when he called no oh, he says his his name. when he says Miles. He says his name. He does say scene. I have yeah. a nephew. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um you're so right. either way he's canon in the MCU, even yeah. if he doesn't have his powers for yeah. whatever reason. Um but yes, so at some point we'll get a live action Miles Morales, likely yeah. not until after the next you know Spider Verse movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then we all might get potentially Kid Loki. Oh yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Or um, America Chavez, I'm sure we'll America get Chavez. America Chavez joining. Uh, yeah. We'll probably get Scar. I'm guessing Hulk's son. Yeah. Um, kind of teased there in the very end of the uh, She Hulk series. Mm -hmm. Um, typically, uh, we have a version of Nova. Um, yeah. But. I, it's kind of a lot of rumors that we'll get the um, Richard Ryder uh, Nova, right? Mm -hmm. That's his name, right? Richard Ryder? For the older one? Yeah. Because Sam Alexander is the younger yeah, one. Yeah, Sam Alexander is the, old, the younger one, and that's who typically is part of the – well, part of the champions, yeah. Um, so it would be cool to see him. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I think there's been more rumors about getting the adult version of, of Nova – Okay. Um, there has been rumored shows. They haven't announced anything, but they've kind of been talking about their they've being shown a Nova the Nova show core and stuff like that in yeah. multiple movies. So I'm yeah. sure he's coming at some point. Uh, yeah, I definitely like to see Nova, regardless of what iteration it is. But if we're talking about a Young Avengers or a Champions, it would probably be the Sam Alexander version. Sure. Which is also I, actually pretty cool. I really like his version of Nova, so I think that'd be fun. Yeah. And then Amon Vellani was saying that she likes to read the Champions more than mm -hmm. the Young Avengers, but yeah. they're very similar as far as their younger teams. Yeah. Um, but I know in the Champion series, there's like a time displaced Scott Summers Cyclops. So that'd mm -hmm. be kind of cool to have a younger version of Cyclops. That'd be really team. cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah. And I mean, in, in that note, we could lead right into the, uh, the end credit scene, uh, which also does tease the X-Men. Yeah. It doesn't really tease it. It straight up gives yeah. us, we get beast. We get Hank McCoy. We get beast and mention of, uh, mention Professor, of X. Professor Xavier. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're apparently seemingly in the, uh, Xavier's mansion. I mean, you got a big old X door. So Yeah. So backtracking a little bit into yeah. the movie, the very end, there's a big old rift that they can't close. So they basically merge all their powers and into um, Monica Rambeau. Yeah, and she kind of absorbs it. Her, yeah. And then she's able to go through and kind of close it, but it closes her into that universe. Mm -hmm. um, and then she wakes up and she sees her mom who doesn't know who she is. You know, it's yep. just the same actress, you know, playing yeah. her. Kind of like a uh, reversal of her waiting for her mom, you know, in the hospital, you know, mm -hmm. but instead she got dusted. Yeah. So she sees her and uh, ends up being a character called named Binary, mm -hmm. um, who's associated with the X-Men, but is uh, essentially a, a like a version of Captain Marvel, like a yeah. Her so, somehow her powers got formed into the shape of a a being, a human, and Come so yeah, it's definitely binary. definitely a different version of binary we're getting in in this. And yeah, uh, a lot of people were like, "Wait, shouldn't that shouldn't binary be like the opposite of Captain Marvel?" But as we saw in Multiverse of Madness on the Illuminati, there was a Captain Marvel mm -hmm. um, played by played by her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's her name or the even the character's name? Um, Maria. Maria, Maria, Maria Rambo. Rambo yeah. 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 Um, and, uh, it was interesting. She was wearing both bangles. Yeah. She had, or something similar. They definitely looked like, they the, looked like the, the bangles, quantum considering quantum that bands, was just yeah. shown in the movie. I'm yeah. sure they were. Yeah. But I mean, they only showed them very briefly, so we don't know, yeah. but she had t both of them on. And, um, so there's a lot of people questioning, like, why was she there in the X mansion with beast? That doesn't really make sense. It wouldn't have been storm or someone else who found her, yeah. but, like definitely would have been Storm because although Storm can control the weather and stuff, as far as I know, she can't fly in space by herself. Um, so I think Binary was able to, like Captain Marvel could fly through space, found her out there yeah. in this void or whatever. And that's, you know, she's like, hey, I need to bring her somewhere where they can help her. And, you know, I'm sure she Xavier has the and Jean, you know, considering she walked through the hex where. Um, it was Wanda, who's a mutant in the comic. That's true, yeah. So it's very likely that Binary recognized that she is a, a mutant or she was mutated in some way. And I hate who better to take her to than the X-Men, you yeah. know? Xavier, and I mean, 
Hank McCoy is a, like a brilliant scientist. So Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. I've seen it in the CGI. Hank yeah, McCoy, there was so. A, so we, we kind of briefly talked about like, what do we think our, our favorite version of beast has been in all the X-Men movies and stuff so far. And we both agreed that this version of him is the best so far best looking. Yeah. Yeah. The most comic accurate, definitely really similar to the night, the nineties uh, cartoon. Mm -hmm. Um, the glasses. Yeah. The glasses, the little, scientists. like little teeth, you know, the underbite more, um, but, uh, but I, I feel like the CGI definitely could have been better. I, I think sure. for me, it was the, the contrast was, was way too, too low. He looked really washed out for some reason. Uh, I'm just really surprised that they didn't put a little more time into that making him look a little better, but yeah, but overall he still, he still, he still, he still looked the best, the best looking yeah. one of all the ones they've done so yeah. far with the different makeups and stuff they've done. Yep. Um, and for sure, Nicholas Holt, uh, won't be coming back to the X-Men since he was cast as Lex Luthor as yeah. of yesterday or today. Yeah. So I, and that's kind of been rumored for a while. Um, sure. He's so. probably been cast since before the writers or since before the actors strike, but either way we got Kelsey Grammer back as beast. And even though he may not be beast going forward, you know, but at least at maybe as CGI, as long as they have him as a voice actor. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense considering we know we're getting uh Hugh Jackman and we've had Patrick Stewart and probably likely going to see Patrick Stewart again, whether it's in, Secret Wars or, or Deadpool three. Deadpool three is likely as well. Yeah, considering um, he's supposedly going to go after the Fox X Men, you know that would be all the of way them. it seems. It's definitely the way it seems. At least that's the way they've teased it, right? By well, showing yeah, like the Fox the logo. Century. Fox. But I mean, you know, how much of this is is maybe that's uh, part of the void? Maybe they go like because they got maybe that yeah. got pruned. That, I, the TVA is going to be part of it, I believe. Right? I'm probably wrong. Well, that was definitely a strong rumor. Is that yeah? It's going to have to do with. TVA is going to probably be like uh, like the new Wong, like in every movie. Like they're going to have a little bit of TVA here and there. It may not be the same characters, but the TVA is going to start showing up a lot considering the multiversal saga. Yeah, yeah. So I imagine almost every movie going forward is going to have some sort of TVA connection. Yeah, I mean, and actually um, that's our, our next topic here is talking about Loki season two. So the perfect uh, segue to get into it. And um you know, the way they kind of end up leaving things, it seems like the TVA is going to be used kind of for cleanup now. I mean, we, I know we haven't discussed how it, uh, Loki season two yeah, ended, but obviously spoilers for that as well. Just like yep. with the Marvels, this whole video is full of spoilers. spoilers yeah. I mean, it's been out for a while. Had, yeah. I've had a couple of weeks almost. So oh, sure. Yeah. But yeah. So basically this thing ends by, by Loki taking on a completely different role. I loved, I loved the, f the finale i don't know about you but i thought it was really well written well you know it was acted. Uh, i like the way it ended i feel like it was maybe a little difficult to follow what really was going on and i feel like they kind of ignored some stuff and kind of just let things work like yeah let's just have this happen you know whatever sure i'm sure time constraints they couldn't they, if they could have made that episode into a full-length movie it would have been probably yeah. much better yeah but you know for what it was what an hour or whatever i don't know how long that last episode was maybe just under an hour you're probably just shy of an hour um either way it was i was engaged the whole time and um so i just yeah. enjoyed it basically i mean loki you know realizes that no matter what he's done so far that it keeps failing and they keep on end up dying but he's able to control his powers now with the time slipping so he ends up going back and going further and further back in time and then he finally asks them like how long is it going to take for me to know everything yeah. you guys know and everything yeah. about this system and they're like he's like he's all decades he's all centuries <laughs> so it literally was centuries he centuries took centuries later. to learn everything so he basically knew everything already which is and, crazy because he's doing all this just to save his friends. I mean, he yeah. could let it go, but yeah. he's doing this because he cares about these people. Definitely an evolved Loki, right? I mean, yeah. he's not selfish like he was before, and he's genuinely – like, I feel bad that we didn't get to have a Loki and Thor moment with Loki now having all this experience and knowledge. As of yet. As of yet, for sure. I mean – They leave it as, like, this is a perfect ending for Loki if they don't ever bring him back. And Tom Hiddleston's pretty much said he's done playing Loki. Now, I'm sure he will eventually come back. For Probably something like again, Secret like Secret Wars, Wars or something, yeah. yeah. I'm sure everyone maybe everyone that. back for Secret Wars, um, Possibly four or five, even it's they've, possible. They've, they've already talked there, about there are form there are five. talks about uh, with Chris Hemsworth to come back, although I think Taika is not going to be directing anymore. That for is this. what was said, yeah, he's um, going to be attached to it. But, anyways, let's, let's get back to, to the Loki, Loki finale. Yeah. So, yeah, so ultimately, he ends up taking on this role that he didn't want. He didn't want a throne. He didn't want the throne from the beginning. Uh, he, he told... Well, he uh, did originally want the throne. Well, he did. The yeah, he did he early on. He didn't want it as far as the TVA throne. Yeah, and that kind of is the part of the full circle moment, right? Sure. Um, you know, uh, the title of the episode was... Um, Glorious Purpose. Glorious Purpose, yeah. the title of the first episode. Yeah, and what he tells to, you know... Uh, from the beginning in the Avengers. In right? the Avengers, yep. Of course it does. I've come too far for anything else. 
I am Loki of Asgard, and I am burdened with glorious purpose. Loki, brother of Thor. We have no quarrel with your people. An ant has no quarrel with the boot. Yep. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, he ends up finding himself that the only way he could really do this is if he takes on basically literally every single timeline that exists, which is like essentially infinite, right? Because every time something changes, mm -hmm. there's a whole new uh, timeline that gets created. And rather than destroying them all, he revives them all and pulls them together. Yeah. So essentially, he finally, after all of these multiple trials where he's having Victor timely go out there and he's telling him what to do, how mm -hmm. to like step by step, this is what you need to do to make this successful. Yep. And he finally gets it and they celebrate. And then he realizes it still didn't matter. Like yeah. it's still, he's like, finally realizes that he's the one that has to sacrifice himself and go over there and do this, that he's a God and he can, he can do yeah. it. And as he's walking down this walkway to the, towards the loom, um, he starts to, you know, change his outfit into his Loki outfit with his like slippers and his horns, which are like <laughs> his nice, sensible slippers. Yeah. Nice. That was pretty funny. So, and he has a cape or whatever, and he starts walking up these like, in, you know, invisible steps that he's creating as he's going, you yeah. know, he's starting to become the God of stories. Mm -hmm. You know, he's creating, he's realizing he's controlling the story Yeah, and it, you know, he uses his powers similar to the classic Loki did with Eliath. Um, in the season one. Yeah. Um, and it was pretty cool seeing that and using his powers. And then b basically it explodes. He destroys the loom, which was what basically holding everything together as far as the sacred timeline. Yeah. Um, it was essentially pruning any branch timelines. And now all these branches are going out, which all the Kings are going out essentially. So if they keep the King dynasty movie, that's how they're setting it up. Cause all these branches are going everywhere. And essentially Loki starts to put like life back into them as yeah. he grabs them. And he starts to realize he can pull them together. He creates a th little throne for himself and he yeah. essentially creates the Yggdrasil tree, like the tree of life. Yeah. He's going to be there for he, all time. Always, you know, that's what gods are supposed to do. They're supposed to serve and he's yeah. going to be there for all time. <laughs> always. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So, um, I mean, back up a little bit, um, you know, the whole thing, the reason he keeps going back and trying to figure out how to, to do this, they're trying to expand the loom. They're trying to make it bigger. So more timelines can fit through it. Right. Sure. And then ultimately what we really find out from he who remains is that the loom is never going to be able to expand. The loom is there as a fail safe. So when it expands too much or things go wrong, it's going to destroy everything and reset and, yeah, and he's like the TVA has been reset multiple times. Yeah. yeah so, so, but. yeah. So he's just going to, you know, reset the sacred timeline and then rebuild the TVA. He doesn't care. So instead Loki takes on everything to keep everything going without the loom. He destroys the loom and creates his, all these timelines and brings them all together. Um, so, you know, you mentioned how, yes, there is a, technically there would be a, the potential of a king for every timeline. It's not necessarily right. Sure, not every timeline. They but... do see one timeline where uh, Victor Timely doesn't get the TVA book. It shows him as a kid. Um, Maybe that'll be a young Nathaniel Richards. That's possible. Iron, Iron yeah, Dad, it's possible. Um, it's another young Avenger potential. He'll have to go forward in time quite a bit because that was back in what, like the sure, but the eighteen hundreds or whatever. But the Iron Lad though does go in through time. Yeah. So, um, but uh, what I was going to say is they 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 really left it open to two potential things, right? They can keep King dynasty there and they could have, there be all these Kings cause there's potentially one in almost every timeline sure. or they kind of tease that, Hey, the TVA's new job now is no longer to prune timelines. It's literally to take out King variants. And they name drop specifically, uh, King, the conqueror from the six, one, six adjacent. Uh, yeah. Or yeah. Cause it was the quantum realm or whatever. Yeah. The quantum realm. Well, is I said a six one six adjacent realm. I think is there is there a six one or is there a quantum realm in every multiverse or is there Probably. one quantum realm that's shared between? I don't know. I don't know. But either know either way, works. either way, they essentially name drop. Uh, they don't name drop. Obvious does. Well, no, but I mean, I was going to say the name drop Ant Man. But they don't say he, that. They he say never drops. <laughs> he never drops. Yeah, six one six says that uh, that it was handled, and so they could kind of leave it there if they want to close the book on King. Mm -hmm. They could say, hey, the TVA's new job is just to to take out these uh, threats from King variants. That's all they're focused on now. And we don't need to worry about it anymore. If they really want to just walk away from the King dynasty, they can. Yeah, And there's, they might pivot towards a Doctor Doom. Yeah, there's rumors that that may happen. And Doctor Doom is the one that's in Secret Wars anyways, who's God Emperor Doom. And he yeah. essentially uses Molecule Man to merge all these planets into this battle world. Yeah. So... So that's very likely, uh, well, it's a possibility, I should say. Sure. Although we did also get a rumor that the 
the writer for King Dynasty is no longer on the project, Dan, right? Dan Daniel Destin Craig or something like that. That right. sounds right, Trump although I don't remember. I'm sure he's the, he's the director it down of, of Shang Chi, and he was attached to King Dynasty, and now he's focused on Shang Chi too. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, you know that seems like maybe they're closing the book on that. You know, uh, obviously there's a lot of legal still stuff still going on with Jonathan Majors. Uh, I believe his court is for the very end of this month. I think the 26th this is his actual start of his trial right after uh, Thanksgiving. Um, the judge refused to drop the charges. Um, look, I'm not going to pass judgment either way. There, you know, there's definitely shady stuff happening. I mean, still innocent until proven guilty, but it doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah. Even, even apparently, even if he is found not guilty, that there's some pretty damning stuff. Yeah, we'll yeah. See. I mean, you know, look, we're not hating on Jonathan Majors. We both love him as an actor. I, um, I really wish they could continue with him as Kang. Yeah. I don't know if that's a possibility at this point. Yeah, I, I'd really like to see. It'd be awesome if the case got thrown out. Um, But what it comes down to is we honestly don't know. What happened? Like we we see some stuff. Sure, there's videos of uh, uh, what's her name? Jabari. Uh, forget her first name. Um, his ex girlfriend. You know, out at the bar, clubs, or whatever. Afterwards, and she doesn't look like she's injured. And maybe that's true, but I think there's also an accusation that he tried to strangle her. So like, apparently, he's been a difficult person to work with on sets anyway. So it's not really a good look considering he's acted yeah poorly in the past. The rumor is that his management company, which uh, forgive me, I don't remember the name of it. It's one of the biggest ones uh, out there. They were planning on dropping him regardless of these charges. So that's not good. I mean, their their whole job is to defend and protect their client. Um, and the fact that they felt that they couldn't anymore and they needed to let him go regardless of the, the charges that were brought against him because of his conduct on other sets. Um, you know, it, it sounds like there's a chance his career might be done regardless of what happens with this trial, which is kind of a bummer because this dude is just he's an amazing actor. He was great in Creed 3. Um, yeah, he just just came on the scene quick. Uh, was amazing in Love, uh, Lovecraft Country. Uh, which everything he's done. He's yeah, done. everything I've seen him in I've really liked. So... A bummer. I love him as Kang because he's played all these different roles, like Victor Timely with the stutters and stuff. And yeah. then he goes to the He Who Remains and then Kang the Conqueror. He, it'd be fun to watch him as all these different Kangs. They uh, already showed uh, it with the dynast or the all of them together, the yeah. Council of Kings or whatever. Yeah. I'll be honest. Um, he's an amazing actor. I don't care for Kang as a villain personally. I mean, this is my personal opinion. I know a lot of people well, probably as of do. Now or just in general? Because he general. has a lot more. Okay. Just in general. Um, I, I'm not a really big fan of King in general, but like, and it's not his fault because he is an amazing actor. But I mean, King has just not been a real threatening villain. I mean, Ant Man took him out. Like. <laughs> but you thought you could win. <laughs> Sorry, well, that's a sorry, uh, variant though. Sorry, like, Scott Lang. He's not King Prime, or he may be not be actually. Yeah, but he, he King was the supposed. Conqueror. I thought he was supposed to be King the Conqueror. Okay, me. I don't know. They call maybe. himself the Conqueror. I don't know. Either way, he was. Uh, there could be more than one King the Conqueror too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, I'm just saying, like, it, it, he didn't seem like he was, like he wasn't like a Thanos level threat in my opinion. Like I, I didn't feel like he was. I didn't feel like they portrayed him that way. Maybe not. I think he was. They were building that up. He was like the focus of this whole like phase. Sure, essentially. sure. But my point is, for me, anyways. Sure. We get this really quick in credit scene of Thanos. Fine, I'll do it myself. And you're just like, oh crap, dude. Like even if you don't know who Thanos is, you're like, dude, this dude's like getting ready to just wreck some fools. <laughs> And I didn't feel that way with with King. I just didn't feel like he was ever a major threat. Um, and we had him for several projects, and I still never felt that way personally. Yeah, I, that's I, just I my totally, opinion. Just my sure. opinion. Of course, it's like that's like your opinion, man. Yeah, that is like. Yeah, it. well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. It's like my, it's it's like it, kind of like, like it. it. Uh, no, but again, Jonathan Majors has been great, and his acting's been great. I do really like the the way he's been able to really be very vastly different character for his different variations of Kang. So yeah. 
Um, we'll see, man. Uh, hopefully everything works out for him. We get to keep him. They get to close out that whole phase the way they wanted to. So um, basically, they've said that Loki season one and two is essentially like two halves of a book. Yeah. So there's probably not going to be a Loki season three. And we may not see Loki again, but more than likely we'll probably see him in secret wars or four five or something. So hopefully we'll get some more Loki in the near future and get to see, you know, hopefully he's not just trapped there forever. We get to see him do something else, you know? Yeah. And maybe that's how everything will get really crazy. Maybe something he'll have to step in and all these timelines will just go everywhere, you know, like causing all these incursions, you know? I mean, maybe, but I, and that's the other thing. Incursions. We haven't even touched on incursions. Right. But like, I, I know I've told you before, and I probably said it on our channel. I'm ready for like the multiverse saga to, to wrap up and to get back to some more grounded stories. You know, I'm looking forward That's to the like, daredevil towards. series and stuff. I know, but it's, it's taking way too long. They're well, so they're introducing far too many characters and not getting back to them. I get what uh, you're saying. I get, that's why a lot of people are getting that Marvel fatigue and there's all these negative rumors is the MCU done and all this stuff. I think that yes, they do need to rein it in and that's what they're building towards and they'll make pivots as they need to. And that's why there may not be a King dynasty. Yeah. They may just make it two parts to secret wars. It might be secret, you know, wars part one and two, Yeah. or they might make two different names like they did with infinity war and they change it to end. Sure. I'm sure that's what they would do. That's yeah. more if, than if likely they what they'll do if they get rid of the King dynasty yeah. story. Yeah. But hopefully they'll figure a way to include Kang, even if it's like a different actor. Even if it's not the King Dynasty and they just include Kang in yeah. Secret Wars. Well, then we're getting rumors that just came out now that someone who's familiar with his contract is saying that it's written to his contract. Oh, that, I did see that. That no one can portray any of the characters he's portrayed. So there can't be someone else playing a different uh, variant. It all has to be him. I'm not sure if that's true. That's a rumor right sure. now. Um, but that would have been a smart rumor. Uh, in fact, I, I kind of wish a lot of the actors would do that. So we have a little bit more continuity with the whole variance thing like sometimes they're different people different actors playing them sometimes different they're not yeah. yeah whatever yeah um then the same charles xavier except for oh never mind i guess there was the um that was the same timeline though but i'm saying there's different variants i'm saying there's still different actors oh. that play charles oh xavier. yeah 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 um, but it's the same actor james mcavoy I couldn't think of yeah but that's the same version of him it's just younger so it's not it's not supposed to be a different variant but they had different timeline ones of the x-men Cause the, all the, they were all, that's all the same one. But what about like the, like days of future past, and all those different actors and stuff playing Cyclops and all the different, other that's characters? just cause they're younger. That's just them younger. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's the same variance. They just went back in time. They can't de-age them enough to make them look. Yeah. But the dark Phoenix and all those different storylines and stuff like, yeah. So they all, they'll all take place. Yeah. They take that's place. That's the same Jean gray. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. I don't like that. Just younger. Yeah. But I mean, that's what they chose. Yeah. Anyways, whatever. Um, but anyways, uh, that's why even days in future past, he goes back and, and things are fixed, whatever. It's it, funny that Amon Valani said she refuses to watch dark Phoenix. Yeah. That's uh, I've just yeah. seen so many articles about that now. Like just about that specifically. I'm like, dang, that's like the headline. Dark Phoenix wasn't great. And uh, age of apocalypse was not good either. Which is a bummer. Cause I really like Oscar Isaac and, yeah. We're totally getting off topic here. No, 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 nope. nope. We're, <laughs> We're not off topic because you like. X -Men. We are talking about X Men. <laughs> it's not on our notes to talk about the X Men, really. But we talked about them earlier with the Marvel. We did. We did. Yes, that's true. We're excited for the. X -Men. We're back to Mon Valani. Who we we're talking about? We were talking about the phases. <laughs> who yeah. cares if we if we talk, we can go back to call call back to stuff? Yeah. No, we can. We can. I mean, the video is almost over. I was getting ready to wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up then. I don't care. All right. All right, guys. Did you get a chance to check out the Marvels? If so, how did you enjoy it? And what did you think of the season finale of Loki? Be sure to like and subscribe. Have, Have a marvelous day. day. Huh? Huh? <gasps> we're, we're time slipping. Oh, my gosh. It kind of <laughs> looked like it, huh? Uh, my mild shirt's not going to hardly show. Oh, well, that's fine. I know what it is. Just looks like a weird line sticking up. It's on this side. Well, you've worn it in the past, so yeah. maybe. I haven't worn it in a while. That's why I went with this one. I wore my Venom, and I don't have a ton of shirts. I wore my Spider Man, like Marvel one Adjust recently. Just the camera a little bit if you want. No, 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 no. No, I want people to just wonder, like, what is that weird <laughs> little penis phallic thing sticking up? <laughs> oh, good times. Oh, wrong one. Ah, I always do that. That's why I was like trying to fix this side of my sh shirt. I was like, no, it's this side. Yep. Mirror. Yeah, the mirrored image. How do they thing. work? I don't know. No one, no one knows. It's a mystery. Mag magnets. How do they work? <laughs> In magnets, how do they work? Uh, something to do with flat Earth. That's all I know. What? What? That's the firmament. The firmament. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Damn it. 
<laughs> listen, listen. Uh, all right. Um, you know we're trapped in a firmament. <laughs> now you do. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the DC show. Is the God of Stories replacing Kevin Bot? Ah, I messed up. I already forgot. I was gonna go straight to stick around. All uh, right. We need some mistakes. It's fine. Yep. We can't be too perfect. No, we can, yeah. but oh, we're choosing okay. not to. Okay. <laughs>